see if we can help this dude get to the fence and remove these dying lower leaves here. This one even still has his little, the very first leaves that uh, come out right after he um, sprouts. Not anymore. All right, reach your little tendril out there, buddy. Reach on over to the fence, please. And the problem with these is that they grow towards the, well, this isn't a problem. It's a problem because of where we planted them, but they grow towards the sun and the sun, they get most of their sun coming from like over here coming down like this, so they grow this way, away from the fence. But once I once we get them attached to the fence, they um they do fine. I don't know what that is. Yeah, if I can just get him to grab onto the fence, then he'll be good. I'll go ahead and remove this leaf too, as it's dying. And when the leaves are on the ground, they're just going to attract slugs and other insects and then eventually probably a disease so I'm gonna keep the leaves off the ground as much as possible as these grow and I'll go ahead and actually get these this leaf off this one right here is a transplant from right here there were two right here and I moved one to over here so this guy his growth is gonna be probably at least a week behind should be a week behind this one. And then this guy is doing pretty well. He's already grabbed onto the, um, the fence. I, I moved him over there. So he grabbed on, his tendrils grabbed on right here. So he should be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this lower leaf because it is also dying and touching the ground. And then I showed this guy yesterday. Yeah, see this dude, you can't even see the top of him in here, but he's on up here grabbing, climbing up the fence very nicely. I'm gonna, um, I'm not sure if this guy's gonna live, this little cucumber. I mean, I think he'll probably live, but he's just really struggling. He was a transplant from over here. There were two over here. I transplanted one here, and he is way behind. There's a little cricket down here. Yeah, this guy is way behind. That was a little... That was what we down here in the south call a fishing cricket. Oh, look what I just found. This is a seed pod. Oh, there's some little baby roly-polies. Little tiny little baby roly-polies. Can you see them? That is a seed pod from the uh, mimosa tree, which is an invasive tree not native to Alabama, or to the United States. Um, I'll show you it here in a second, but the mimosa tree is an invasive species and it just takes over and it, it produces thousands of seeds on each tree that fall and then just continue to spread. And we have quite a few around here bordering our property. And um, so I find these seed pods all over the place and I get rid of them because I don't want them in the garden. Okay, uh, here's just an update on the beans. These two are uh, lima beans and they're growing pretty well. I think we might actually get some uh, crop from these two lima bean plants. Um, the, I planted four more of these up on the back porch and uh, four more of the dragon's tongue up on the back porch as well. And those are actually sprouting. I noticed this morning that they were sprouting. I'll show you those later. Uh, over here, Right here is uh, one dragon's tongue plant that actually sprouted 
but it is, I, I don't think it's grown in over a week. So I'm not really sure what it's doing. No idea. I just found some weird looking tiny little bug on the, some of these lettuce plants that are going to seed. It's really amazing just how many insects you find when you just get in close and really look. There's so many really tiny insects that you just don't even notice until you really spend time getting close and looking um, at the plants and inspecting plants. It's really crazy and a lot of them are, are beneficial and a lot of them are not beneficial and it's difficult to kind of learn about all of them because there's just so many. Like just right there there was um, some type of hoverfly that's I think beneficial. There's a little cricket in there right behind that hoverfly. There was some sort of leaf beetle um, and then all those weird little tiny insects. I don't even know what they are. There must be some sort of aphid or something. I have no idea. Anyway, um, I'm gonna harvest the okra. Which, by the way, the okra is nearly as tall as me. Um, so they're probably around six feet tall now. Which makes it easy to harvest. There's still quite a few uh, okra pods forming and growing. But production definitely seems like it's slowing down. I'm only harvesting three right now for today uh, but like I said there's I mean there's still quite a bit that are growing it just seems like they're growing slower now I don't know if that's just the plants have run their course or if it's too much rain or something recently I don't know that doesn't sound right I mean, it's still hot maybe they're not getting enough Sun because of the rain and how cloudy it's been I don't know I don't really want to but I feel like I should probably flip the uh, Flip the. What the heck is on the wood chips right here? What in the world? Okay, so. Definitely some type of mold growth. Are those like spores? Like mold spores? Or. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to research this really quick. Okay, Google. Mold spores growing on wood chips. Yeah, I know that. Okay, Google. Mold spores. I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't know how to figure it. This is like so generic. It's like so generic in general. How the heck do I... Obviously when I Google white fungus spore, there's like a million things that come up, but I don't know what how to figure out what exactly it is in this case. And why is it only growing in a couple of spots? White fungus, I, see I don't think, this is, and this is going to be too specific. White fungus on wood chips. No. This isn't it. What's growing on my mulch? Look at images. See if I can find a similar image. Oh my gosh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think maybe I could just turn over the wood chips right here and bury that or try to figure it out. I took a picture of it. I don't know. Okay, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I don't particularly want to flip the compost over today, um, but I feel like I should because of the mouse. I just want to make sure that this mouse is not still here. I mean, I don't care where he goes, just not in my compost pile. Well, and not really, I don't really want him in the house, but Turning it is also advantageous to just helping the system decompose faster, and I would really like to have this ready pretty soon. So, maybe I'll do it. 
First I'm gonna check the temperature. So hotter than yesterday by a few degrees. Um, probably about five degrees hotter. So it's still, still heating up. I don't imagine that it's gonna get much warmer than this. I just don't think it has the, the fuel in it, in it to do that anymore, so. <sighs> okay, I guess I'll get it out and put it back in. Make sure this mouth isn't in here. I was going to get the stuff to start moving the wood chips that I found. I mean, start moving the compost and I found um, some mushrooms growing in the wood chips, which is really further evidence for me that this is just mold growing over here because it rain, it's been raining so much that the wood chips are really moist, which is a really good condition for fungus to grow and mold to grow. And um, indicative of that are these mushrooms that have come up. I don't know anything about mushrooms. I do like mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms by themselves. I like mushrooms in stuff. Uh, but it's not a bad sign to have mu mushroom growth in the wood chips from what I understand because it just means that um, that there's life inside of the wood chips breaking down the wood chips and breaking down the other material and that's what I want to happen anyway so No mouse, so maybe my disturbing him two days ago kind of deterred him from wanting to come back. Hopefully that's the case. I gotta figure out how to make the compost go faster. The So I, the guy who I kind of, well I mean, they didn't really copy anybody, there's just only one way to make compost, you just put organic matter together and then wait, but, um, the guy who I kind of followed and based this whole thing off of was is Charles Dowding, and I'll link a video to him talking about his compost system, but I knew going into this that his compost piles, he has like six different piles, and they take like eight months to get completed, but that's because he only turns them one time during that whole course of eight months. Um, and it's because he does like a 50-50 ratio of carbon to nitrogen. So maybe my ratio is similar to his since that's why it's taking so long. Or I just need to turn it more often like I am now. Or maybe it's not wet enough, which is why I've been putting, put a decent amount of water on it just now. Because it did seem kind of dry and even two days ago I put a decent amount of water on it and then I pulled it out today and it was dry again. So maybe it's just really thirsty. All the bacteria in there are, just need the water to, so maybe I just need to wet it more. Just at one point it was really wet, and so I didn't, I, I thought maybe I shouldn't wet it so much, but I don't know, it's all just a trial and um, just a learning experience. So hopefully I will learn something from this. I mean, I think I already have, but uh, when it's complete, hopefully I'll have a better understanding of how it all works and maybe I can get some different material for next time, and even for this one that's going right now. I need brown material for that. Um, I don't know. Lots of things to think about, but I really need to fine tune and refine this whole process because the compost is really what makes or breaks makes or breaks the the health of your plants. Because especially with my soil being so terrible and just being clay, I really need good compost to add to the soil. And there's not I've looked around and there's like no good like homemade compost around me really that anybody is selling. So I gotta make it myself.
right, here are the um, the beans that have uh, started to sprout. Some of them, one of them is, is already pretty much sprouted, but there's like several others that are coming up. Hopefully all four of each type will come up and I'll be able to transplant those. Um, but I'm not even sure if these are gonna make it to, uh, to be all the way to actually produce beans because there's only about 80 days or so um, left in the growing season here. I mean, you know, depending on when the first frost is. It just depends on when the first frost is, but on average, it's like November 15th or something. So that's about 80 days. And these beans might take 80 to 90 days to, to get to maturity. So I'm not sure if I'll actually get to uh, harvest any beans from these, but um, it'll be all right. I just, I'm just trying things anyway. So I have some um, uh, some individual little trays to put seedlings in, and here is some of the lettuce that's come up. And the lettuce here is kind of densely in here, and that's not really ideal because by the time I go to transplant these, when they're ready to be transplanted, their roots are going to be all tangled up probably, and that's probably not good. So what I want to do is take the strongest ones out of here and put them into their into an individual little uh, hole, little place for each one so that they're in their individual one. So then it's actually really easy to transplant because you just pop them out and put them in the ground when you go to transplant them. Um, Charles Dowding has a video that I'll link below that shows how he does this and he can't, I can't remember what he calls it. He calls it something. He, he calls taking these apart and putting them into individual things he calls it something but I can't remember anyway I'm I highly doubt I'm gonna be able to do it going to be able to do it as well as he does it or even show it as well as he shows it so I'm gonna give it a try and see how it goes all right I put down some brown paper just to try to prevent some of the mess that I might make here but um, and I have four of these trays that I put um, some potting mix into. I, ideally it would be, again, my own compost, but the compost isn't ready, so I have this potting soil, and it'll do fine um, just to help this lettuce get up to the point to where I can transplant it. Uh, and really, if anything, this potting mix could have some more vermiculite in it or something just to make it uh, drain better, because it, as it is, it doesn't really drain very well, but I'll just water it a good bit if I have to. And I made this little um, I whittled this little stick down to a tool that I can use because in Charles Dowding's videos and video in the video that I have linked here when he does this he has a little wooden tool that he uses um, and look Charles Dowding knows what he's doing and if he has a little tool then it, there's probably a reason that he has that little tool it probably makes it way easier so I tried to sort of make myself one just out of a just out of a stick so uh, basically the idea here from from what I understand from watching his videos, is pretty simple. Um, first thing I need to do is I need to get some of these out of here. And I really am mainly concerned with the the ones that are, have the strongest root system right now. This is just falling apart, but that's okay. I think I can just pull these out. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but... The ones with these, the, the really nice roots are going to be what I'm going to put into the to these individual little pieces, individual little cups here. So I'm just going to get one like this, and I'm going to make a little a little divot inside this thing, and I'm just going to put this in, and then with the tool I'm just pushing the, making sure the, the root is down in the uh, potting mix and then I'm just gonna close in the potting mix around the plant so that the plant is upright. And Charles Dowding says that as long as the root is is in the soil, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be straight down, it can be curled up or whatever, as long as the root is, is down in and not exposed, then it should be fine. Okay, here's two two plants here this one looks really good nice long root system 
So again, I'm just making a, a little hole and I'm just pushing the root down in here and a good bit of the stem of the plant as well. And then we'll just cover that up. Just like that. So I'm just gonna keep doing that with um, as many of these that I think uh, are nice and strong and have nice roots. I'm just gonna keep putting those in until I have you know, some trays full of some little lettuce sprouts. There's three. And um, this, using this method, it makes it to where you can just plant a bunch of seeds into one system like this. And then whichever ones sprout, whichever ones are the strongest are the ones you pull out and you put into individual little, individual little cups. And then you have full trays where there's none missing and also you, you're picking the strongest ones. So you're picking the ones that are probably gonna be doing the best anyway. So here's another one, another little nice little strong one. Make my little divot in this. Put that root down in there. And then just put that little plant in there. There's four done. Okay, so I'm going to um, do as many of these as I have and get them into individual little trays. Okay, uh, so I finished the Tom Thumb lettuce. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. So that's 42 Tom Thumb lettuces, which I think will be plenty, assuming they even, you know, completely get to maturity. Um, the Tom Thumb lettuces, when they get maturity, are basically, uh, you just cut the whole thing off, basically, and it's like, that's a whole bowl of salad right there. So um, potentially this is 42 meals. 42 salad meals with just the, the Tom Thumb lettuce. And that came from this. So from the, see there's more here, I just didn't feel like doing it because this is enough. I don't even think I have enough room to plant all these out in the garden anyway, so. Uh, but so I had two more of these that I separated the Tom Thumb lettuces out into the individual little cups. And then these are cabbage, I can't remember what kind, um, that I also uh, transplanted out of larger cups. Um, over there. I already put them back over there. So here is six, seven, eight, nine cabbages here, and then there's still one, two, three, four, five individual ones left over there. So uh, what is that? 14 cabbages, 42 Tom Thumb lettuces. This is all just experimental. I've never done this before. Um, we'll see how it goes. It really wasn't, it's really not difficult to do that, and I actually like this this method of just planting a whole bunch into one thing and then kind of thinning them out and putting the strongest ones into individual little trays. That way, you know you have the stronger ones out of that batch and also your, your whole tray is full rather than starting in the tray and then you know some seeds don't germinate or you have really weak seeds and then, um, so then your tray just isn't even full with all of your best chance for getting a good crop. Um, so now I don't really know what to do with these. Because in here, in the deck, we have screens, screen windows. So they get, I mean, they are outside in a sense, but they don't get a whole lot of sunlight, only when the sunlight kind of comes down far enough to where it can come in through the screens. So I guess I could put them outside somewhere so I could get a little bit more sun now that they've sprouted. Um, I'm not sure. Because this is not a greenhouse that they're in. I mean, this is... They're, they don't, they hardly get any sun in here. So I'll probably move them outside. Maybe I'll move some outside and leave some in here and just see what happens. So I can kind of do a test, a trial and see which ones do better. That'll be a good idea.
I just watched a video of some woman talking about compost. I'll link the video below, but uh, basically, basically, basically she's just giving an overview of what compost is and why it's beneficial and all that. But what I found amazing was all the times that she said she'd, she'd bring up something or she'd show a slide of something and then she'd say like, no one really knows what this is. It's just so much unknown still to soil and microbial life and it's really fascinating. She even, she even showed a, a slide, a picture of something she found under the microscope, under her microscope, um, in, a, in a compost tea that she made out of rainwater. And uh, she said she sent it to you know, all her expert friends and all this stuff. And literally no one knows what it is. Nobody knows. It's just kind of crazy to me kind of bizarre but not really I think there's so much complexity on this earth that we don't really understand everybody knows that you know there's a lot of things in the ocean that we still don't understand obviously there's a lot of things in outer space that we don't understand but to think that there's stuff right here in this soil right underneath me that we'd have no clue about I don't know I found it pretty interesting um, you know, I don't really know who this woman is. I don't know if she, if she's right about everything that she said or not, but it's very interesting.